Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna be giving you a tour of my 2300 Maycraft pilot house. So stay tuned. All right guys, so today I'm gonna to be giving you a tour of my 2300 Maycraft pilot house. This video is actually long overdue. You guys probably have seen it in a couple of my previous videos, but it's always been dirty. It hasn't been clean as is now because I'm actually gonna be selling uh, this boat because now I'm going to be eating something that's a little bit more appropriate for the different types of fishing and crab eating that I do So make sure you guys stay tuned because I'll go through the whole process of me uh, Buying a boat and you know the kind of the decisions uh, that I made in order to get that boat and, All right, so I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod and give you guys a tour of the boat. So let's get to it All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start from the front of the boat as you can see it's got a nice bow rail over here this is great if you're in the front give you a little bit more added security and we'll go up here you can see there is a uh, little pulpit that's not really a pulpit I forget what they call it but that's uh, to have an anchor I actually ended up losing my anchor and on the top you'll see also right there you can see there is a windlass and what this does it allows you to uh, pull up your anchor um, you just hit a button or a switch and it'll pull up your anchor. But uh, didn't really use it that much anymore because I stopped live lining. But as you can see here up in the front, I actually give you guys a closer look of it as well. But you can see it's got a nice sitting area for you here on the front. So in the front of the boat, you can see it's got a nice V. So it'll cut through waves. Um, I've been in some pretty nasty stuff and it does uh, cut through the waves nicely. But you do really still have to pick your days. You can see it's got bottom paint. I never really uh, repainted the bottom paint because I never keep it in the water. But as you can see, it has a nice V to it and it does kind of flatten out a little bit on the back. So it's uh, kind of a mod V hole. If you guys can see that there. But it's got a little bit of a flare there. So it's uh, somewhat of a dry ride, but especially dry with that pilot house, but water does splash over when you get some uh, pretty big chop. As you can see also that bow rail does kind of continue down to the back here. What makes that nice is that you have some security as you're walking to the front of the boat, uh, which you'll see in a little bit. So here's the back of the boat. It's powered by a Yamaha F225 four stroke. This is a great motor for this boat. This is actually the biggest motor you can get for it. And I think the fastest I've gone wide open throttle with just two of us was uh, 42 miles per hour. But typically I never really go that fast. I kind of just go out, you know, at a pace that's comfortable for me. But if we look here, you can see the deck. It's a lot of deck space. That's kind of what made me fall in love with this boat when I initially bought it. And again, like I said, it is a great fishing boat, but uh, not so much for crabbing because of that. Um, pilot house there it kind of acts like a sail when you're in the wind if you're crabbing and uh, it's kind of hard to maneuver but it's doable but it's not you know the most ideal for crabbing uh, from the back here let's see oh you can see on the back I also have Lenco trim tabs these are kind of a must for a type of boat like this it does help you a lot when you are trying to get your boat to plane you know when you're not going fast um, it's, uh, it's definitely a must if I were to get any boat. So my future boat is going to have these. Um, if not, I'll put them on. So here's a look at the deck. It's a lot, a lot of deck space for a smaller 23 foot boat. On the back here, you can see I've got the two rod holders that came with the boats. Um, also have two more on the sides here. It's the same setup on the other side. Then you also have the rod holder storage here where you can put your brushes and such there as well. And then what I did add on myself or I had somebody put them on was on the sides here, I got these rod holders installed. So in total, you have to include also the rocket launcher that's here. There are 24 rod holders on this boat. So you have plenty of space you know to hold rods and such and then also even in the cabin it's a ton of space in there as well so here on the back 
this is where my batteries are stored and then I do have a dual battery switch that is right here same thing on the other side that's just my second battery that's in there then down there that's the bilge there so here's a little access port uh, for any of the uh, lines that are running forward to the fuel all right so i chose to put the two seats here it's really nice so you could seat four nicely and then i had another seat where i could fit a fifth person or just have people stand and uh, that worked just fine but coming to the front you can see these nice boxes here where the seats stand um there is a speaker here as you can see on both sides there's my uh, extinguisher as well never really used the uh radio that much unless we're like chilling but when i'm fishing you know trying to keep it quiet to uh not scare any of the fish but we have these uh two seats here in the front it's a little todd um seats uh, they're fairly comfortable but for me, I find it because I am really challenged. It's kind of hard to um, steer. I'm usually on the edge of it right here, um, steering. Um, but while we're here, you can see the helm. It's got the nice big wheel. I put this knob on. Wish it was the spinning one, but you know, it still works just great. And then we've got the gauges here. Um, we've got the anchor uh, bills. There is a live wheel pump, which I have installed in the back there is no actual live well but i made a trash can into a live well and then on the back you'll see here i have this hook up right here which goes down under the deck and then into the bilge there's actually a seacock on the bottom which you open up and then the water can come through uh, a hole that's on the bottom of the boat and uh, that's the live well I did use when I was live lining, but don't do that much anymore. And then here, you can see this is for the windlass to uh, bring it up and down. And then I've got over here the uh, switch for the trim tabs. And of course, there's the ignition. And then there is the throttle. All right, so I just put on my Lawrence HTS 12. It's a pretty big fish finder. This is great for when I'm in the back here uh fishing so you look forward to see if there's still you know fish on the screen works just great um here on the the dash you can see it's a pretty nice dash got a lot of space here to put whatever um usually throw my drinks or food i'm snacking on up there and then here's also the remote for the stereo that's over here that i don't really use as much so here's the seat configuration. You can see there's the captain's seat over there. And then over here, there's your passenger seat. The nice thing they have here too is got these nice little stands on both of them for your feet when you're driving. This makes it a little bit more comfortable um, when you're driving. So let's go ahead and go into the cabin here. See it's a nice, pretty nice spacious cabin. Um, you can see those little pillows there you can actually put them in the center here and then this whole thing is covered and you could take a pretty nice nap in here it's a lot of good space in here and then inside of the cabin there's actually more storage underneath here as you can see if i lift up the seat you have those storage compartments there's storage on both sides so on the other side another compartment and then even on the front you can see the little hatch right there hopefully there's a the hatch and then the front here this is just access to get to your um front pulpit uh that's actually where all the rope is stored for the anchor At one point there was i think 300 feet of road it's way shorter now but and this little locker here this actually drains to the back bilge so even if you have the water coming it goes back to the bilge and then of course the bilge pump will pump all that water out and here on the top you've got a little nice little hatch here where if you want to just chill and open up the hatch you can uh, get some air and get some sun in 
Um, don't use it that much, but this for me has actually been mostly just storage inside of here. Um, oh, of course, here's the box. This is where all the wiring is for my electronics and such. But this whole enclosure here is perfect for fishing and, you know, any inclement weather. We step all the way back. It's great because in the wintertime, you know, I could fish year round and uh, be pretty comfortable. This did have an enclosure, but I had some issues with it uh, where it kind of rip off and, uh, yeah, I just never got it repaired, but this cabin is really nice even without the enclosure. You're still fairly uh, warm in here, especially when I have my Dugu jacket on. Don't have to worry about um, getting cold. I think when it gets like into the 20s, that's when it gets uh, a little bit cold and really your feet are the main problem. But let's go ahead and go to the front so you get a better look at the what the front looks like. So you can see here, this is the nice thing about having this bow rail here is the safety for uh, stepping up here. So if I step up here, see I got a nice, I can actually hold on to the, the top here like so and then make my way around to the front. And then here's the hatch again. You can see it's got two grab bars as well. But this is a nice little place for the family to just kind of chill and, you know, get some wind in their face as we're underway. So that's a little nice place to sit right here. See that right there. And then you can see the top. A lot of space up there too. Um, you could probably jump off and dive into the water, but we never really did that. To be honest with you, I never really spent a whole lot of time up here because I'm always in the back in the helm, driving the boat and what have you. If and then I see other nice thing about the top, it's got those um, rails on the top. That's actually where I would have my uh, planer boards hook up um, towards the back to get them kind of higher and uh, into the water. So also on the front here, I didn't mention was the um, the lights here, navigation lights, and then the center one is right there. You can see in the middle. So that's the actual white one uh, for the center. It'd usually be on the back if like you're in a bass boat. But then the green and red are here. Then on this side, just uh, just like the other side, so you can walk back and it's got the nice bow rail like I mentioned. Then you can grab onto these rails to get back safely. And that's pretty much it. That's my 2300 Maycraft pilot house. Sorry I didn't show this to you guys earlier, but it's been a great fishing boat. But now we're gonna be moving on to something else that's more um, appropriate for the different types of uh, fishing and crabbing we do. So make sure you guys stay tuned because uh, hopefully a new boat will be coming up and uh, I'll share with you guys the whole process of me buying the boats and uh, even the process of selling this. You know, hopefully this will be sold fairly soon. Um, but I'll share with you guys that process. But if you guys have any comments or questions about buying or selling boat, let me know in the comments section below. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe for future videos. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.